What are the Bears' three strongest position groups heading into the NFL season? We'll take a look at that. And as training camp is 15 days away, who are the biggest cut candidates on the Chicago Bears roster? We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host there, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content. So I want to talk about the Bears' strongest position groups. You guys know, if you've been watching this show for a while, you'll probably know which position group I feel is the strongest right now that I have the most confidence in heading into the NFL season. But I want to talk about kind of the Bears' strengths overall and um, what are we going to look at to kind of be those strongest position groups and why heading into the season. And the first one is one that I talk about a whole hell of a lot, and that is the cornerback core for the Chicago Bears team. And Overall, the secondary, right? Kevin Bayard, Jaquan Brisker as well, you can throw into that. But I'm going to focus on the, on, the, on the cornerbacks here right now. When you look at it, having Jalen Johnson, who, you know, isn't, wasn't drafted by this front office, but did get a deal. And he's been paid like a number one quarterback. Cornerback is supposed to be paid. And at that time now, it comes with the higher expectations of his own personal performance, as well as how the defense is going to hopefully start off in a better place. But when you add to that, Kyler Gordon going into his third year, his second year now playing that nickel, and we know how that paid off for him last year, how good Kyler Gordon looked in that nickel position last year. You add to that Tyreek Stevenson, and then you have that trio of Tyreek Stevenson, Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, which uh, just the way that they, that they all complement each other's skill set is all something that's really good. You look at how that team grew, uh, well, that core grew over the course of last season, and then just finished that season really strong, of course, after the acquisition of Montez Sweat, when we got more consistent pressure on the quarterback. And so looking at three former second round picks there, all entering and coming off some of the best years of their career, that is one of the best cornerback groups that you're going to find, I think, in the division. And I know, you know, hearing in the division is going to trigger a lot of people, but that's just how confident I feel about this cornerback crew for the Chicago Bears. And in that, I didn't even mention Terrell Smith as well, who played more limitedly, but he showed so many flashes as well last season of him just being able to step in when needed and complement those uh, those main three guys' skill set as well. And don't forget, Terrell Smith and Tyreek Stevenson were in a battle last year in training camp to see who was going to be that starting center opposite side of, J of Jalen Johnson. And so when you add all those things together and how they finished last season, this is the group that I have the highest expectations for next season. Now, that's not to say that the, 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 the synergy between the pass rush and the pass coverage is a huge important part of the success of both those groups overall. But the cornerback crew, I just feel so extremely confident in heading into next season where I think that this is going to be a year where we just see it all come together even more than what it did towards the end of last season. And then you add in Kevin Bayard, Jaquan Brisker. Overall, that Bears secondary is, is probably one of the aspects I am the most confident in as a position group. If you're talking about individual players, of course, it's different. Individual players, Montez Sweat, I have tremendous confidence in him as a player, and TJ Edwards. But when you look at an overall position group, that cornerback crew, I think is going to be one that we look back on and realize that we have set the foundation of a crew that hopefully is going to be together years and years to come and, and just grow to be more and more uh, dominant as that time goes on overall. If you guys have been paying attention, you guys know, I, the real, one of the reasons I have confidence over this Bears team heading into next season isn't because of the new acquisition of quarterback or anything like that. Of course, that plays a part into it, but I think that overall this defense is going to be at such a high level that it's going to help propel the, the Bears into getting into playoff contention and then allow that kind of leeway for that offense to kind of grow over time and get over any type of hurdles that they have. But the cornerback crew, Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, Tyreek Stevenson with Terrell Smith, coming in there as well, and let's not even look, overlook Josh Blackwell, who also had some flashes as well at times last season as well. I feel extremely confident about this in the secondary overall. Yeah, I, I just feel really confident over their ability to just be one of the best and strongest parts of the Chicago Bears defense, a defense that I have very high marks heading into the season. And as well as that defense is the linebacking core. Listen, I, I can't say enough about T.J. Edwards and what he, what he brought to the Chicago Bears last year. He was a steal in a lot of ways for the Chicago Bears and what they, what they got. Considering that uh, Tremaine Edmonds came into that 
getting the, the money that he got last offseason. And not to say that TJ Edwards was kind of overlooked at all, but I do think that people kind of looked at what, what Tremaine was going to bring kind of more and just thought that TJ Edwards was kind of going to be a good complimentary piece. But when you look at it, uh, three years in a row now that he's had over 100 yards, 100 sacks. Jeez, uh, I wish it was 100 sacks, 100 tackles in a season. And the last two, the last one with Philadelphia and the last one with the Bears, over 150 tackles in that time. Uh, 90, 91 solo tackles last season, two and a half sacks, one fumble force, two fumble recoveries, three interceptions. T.J. Edwards put together an extremely solid season, above solid. Solid isn't doing it enough justice. An extremely good season for the Chicago Bears last year. And then you look at Tremaine Edmonds. Even with the injury things around Tremaine Edmonds, still over 100 tackles for him as well. Didn't really ha didn't have any sacks. He had one fumble force, one fumble recovery as well, and uh and uh one inter no four interceptions he had last season and one touchdown as well for the Chicago Bears last season. But having those two guys and what they've already shown to be, and if you add in Tremaine Edmonds, who only played 15 games last season to be more healthy, right? Which 15 is still relatively close to being able to say somebody played a full season. But Tremaine Edmonds, T.J. Edwards, and the continued growth of Jack Sanborn. That linebacking core is one that I feel extremely confident in as well because they bring it. They have the edge. They, they uh, you know, train Edmonds can get back to being better in coverage like he was coming in. Uh, you know, I feel really confident about that group. And then you got Jack Sanborn and Noel Sewell who are both looking to prove some things as well. Noel Sewell who didn't play a lot as a rookie, but I think he's he's bringing in some really good depth for the Chicago Bears there. And you know, uh, Jack Sanborn. Moving from the interior, the middle linebacker, to to being on the outside last year was a little bit of a growth for him. I still think that Jack Sanborn projects better as a middle linebacker, but I understand why the Bears want to play Tremaine there. But I think that Jack Sanborn as well is going to be somebody who it really – and I think people forget too, this is also a contract year for Jack Sanborn. It's not uh, – you know, he he his contract's up at the end of the season as well. So, you know, if he wants to stick around, which I think either way he's going to stick around, it doesn't mean – as I've said before, that the Bears can't look to maybe bring an upgrade there, but I think he's still going to have plenty of snaps, even if they do look to do that. But the, the key thing with Jack Sanborn is he's not a player that you necessarily have to look to replace, and especially as this linebacking core continues to develop and grow together, I feel confident in it. And if Noah Sewell, in his second year, can bring more than what he brought last year and take better, better advantage of some of the opportunities there, because, again, uh, uh, our, our new defensive coordinator, Eric Washington, he likes to rotate that defense in. He likes to keep everybody as fresh as possible, more so on the defensive line, but he still does a lot there of using the depth there. So Noel Sewell could come in and play an important uh, role for the Chicago Bears as that fourth linebacker this year. And if he hits tremendous growth as well, this linebacking core can take off even further than what it did last year. I, I, this is a linebacking core that feels like a Chicago Bears linebacking core, right? And when the Chicago Bears are good, we know that we have really great linebacker production. And if we can get to that point, I think that's something that's going to definitely help uh, this team a lot. But I'm really looking at this linebacking core of being something that helps the Bears grow this season as one of my lights goes out. That sucks. We're just going to turn the other one off just for synergy there. Uh, but, you know, so I'm really looking forward to this linebacking core continue to grow and develop and things like that. And I think if that is that something that continues and uh, again, they're they're starting off the season with Montez Sweat in that defensive line, and you know if Javon Dexter. And then while I'm not, I don't have the line the the defensive line on this list, but uh, you know if I was talking individual players, Montez Sweat would be on it. But hopefully, having a more consistent pressure from that defensive line is not going to help do anything but help the deep, the the linebacking core as well. So really confident about this linebacking core as well heading into next season. And then we get into the next one that I have, and that's the wide receiver core. And mainly because of not only the depth there, but the fact that it's two veterans there that you know who's what's what's going to bring. Yes, we have a rookie quarterback that's going to be thrown to him. Yes, there is still some big doubt overall as well around that offensive line just because of health, things like that. Nate Davis, is he going to show up? What's his mental like? But I think even taking those things away, this wide receiver core is a solid one. When you look at DJ Moore coming off a career year and everything that DJ Moore brought to the Chicago Bears team, how he worked out great chemistry as well with Justin Fields in only one season. The question now is, can he build that same camaraderie with Kayla Williams and that same chemistry with Kayla Williams? And that's why I like to hear that they are setting up outside of training camp, throwing sessions, things like that. We already know that Kayla Williams reached out to him to do some work with him and the, and the wide receiver core. 
and that's something of having a lot of confidence in this. And DJ Moore is one of it. 96 receptions last year for over 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns, an average of 14 yards per reception last year. DJ Moore is looking to build off that season with now having a better play caller as well at Shane Waldron and somebody who can be a little bit more trusted and getting creative in that offense. And I like that as well. And then you add the veteran in Keenan Allen. Listen, Keenan Allen is a dog. And while I get it, people have the injury concerns. He's already said that he could have played more games last season, but they kind of asked him to sit out. But you look at it, even with only 13 games played last season, almost 1,300 yards at 1,243, uh, uh, average of over 11 yards per reception, seven touchdowns in that as well. Like, it's just like Keenan Allen having just, if it was just DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, I would already feel more confident about that wide receiver core than what I felt the last two or three years for the Chicago Bears. But then you add in Rome Odunze and how Shane Waldron has already talked about using him to take advantage of mismatches and, and exploit things. When you have that much depth at the wide receiver position, that's something that you 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 need to use to your advantage. And, you know, if Shane Waldron could do that as much as he's talked about, that's a big thing for the Chicago Bears overall. So the, the, the wide receiver core, uh, the next group that I feel the most confident in heading into the season. And then lastly on this list, one that kind of goes, I think, under not, not talked about enough, the tight ends. Having Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, and Mercedes Lewis back there now for the Chicago Bears. Listen, we can see a lot of two tight end sets, especially early for Caleb Williams. And if we see that, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett there. Like the fact that you have the depth that you have in targets for, for uh, Caleb Williams in, in the three wide receivers, the two uh, tight ends there, that's, that, that's just tremendous. And that's not even getting into the running backs and using DeAndre Swift in the passing game. But I feel extremely confident over what Gerald Everett's going to be able to bring. You look at adding him 51 receptions last year for over 400 yards, three touchdowns, an average of 8.1 yards per reception last year. He's going to be a big part of that. Having him and Cole Komet as kind of tight ends that can both do it all, I think it's going to be a big part of that. And then what can be said about, about Cole Komet? Getting the contract extension last year, coming in, having one of his best years, 73 receptions, 719 yards and six touchdowns as well for Cole Komet. He's seen so much growth, and that was under a Luke Getze offense. So, yeah, he had one less touchdown than what he had in 2022. We understand why and things like that, but you're looking at Cole Komet building upon everything that he did last year as well, the almost 10 yards per reception, uh, which is something that he's had basically three years in a row. Technically, it was 9.8 last year, over 10 the last two years between that, but I'm rounding it up. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. And then you got the vet in Mercedes Lewis, who is one of the better blocking tight ends there. I feel really confident about this tight end group as well. And I think that it hasn't been talked enough about. As much as with the, the, the quarterback, as much as with you know the addition of DeAndre Swift, of course the wide receivers are going to get a lot of notice as well. But you got to talk about having solid tight ends and what that means for simplifying, even though I don't think they're trying to simplify the offense, but just in getting solid, big targets for your quarterback especially with a shaky offensive line to be able to use that. The tight end group may be the most understated group heading into next season, I feel, for the Chicago Bears just because of the amount of depth that we have there. And so that's something is what to look out for. And I think that this is going to be a tight end group that is going to give uh, Caleb Williams the exact type of targets that he needs, especially to get him out of some shaky situations, and as well as also being solid in the blocking game as well. So feel very confident about that. I had to throw that group in there as well. Now, it can't all be sunshine and rainbows as as we're heading to the uh to the to the opening of training camp 15 days away. Are we from training camp opening? And so you got to ask yourself, who are the cut candidates? And I've kind of gone over this over the course of the season, but I want to put it in a more condensed list here. The first one I'm going to go to is Larry Bourne. And I think that if the Bears do if anybody on that offensive line and I know some people are going to ask, well, "What about Nate Davis? Guaranteed contract, he's not going to be cut." But Larry Borum could be cut for a few reasons. While he was a former fifth-round pick that came in here and played really well, and I still think that Larry Borum still shows really solid enough uh, uh, production is enough for what you want as a depth piece. But when you look at it last season, he gave up three sacks, 25 pressures on 225 passing uh, pass-blocking snaps last year. And then when you look at, uh, for 2022, uh, Braxton Jones in that time gave up uh, you know, 32 pressures, two sacks, and, four, and 421 pass blocking uh, snaps. So Larry Borm is somebody. He ranked 74th among 81 qualified offensive tackles last year. 
So somebody who still has some upside, but I do think the cost savings is a reason why he could be cut. The Bears can save almost $3 million, and if they do need to go out there and add a veteran either on that offensive line or on the defensive line or in any position and want to save some money, Larry Borum is kind of the odd man out when it comes down to it. Now, am I necessarily saying or calling for Larry Borum to be cut? No, not necessarily, but when you look at who the Bears brought in here that can play multiple positions, Larry Borum may just find himself on the, on the odd man out. You, of course, got Braxton Jones, Kieran Amagaje, who may pass him up on that depth chart if he's ready, and that's what it comes down to. Kieran Amagaje and how ready he is for the NFL season next year may be what determines the, the, uh, the, the future of Larry Borm. So, you know, and while Larry Borm can play multiple positions as well, like you still got Darnell Wright at the other tackle position, Jake Curran as well, and Avante Collins. So I do think that there is a world in which uh, Larry Borm, if he does not bring it in training camp, could end up being a cut candidate. And that, that, that you have to look out for as well. What I would say, and Bears still seem like they're attached to Doug Kramer as well, Ryan Bates, things like that. So look out for that one. Next up is Valus Jones. And I, I get why. There's a lot of mindset right now that Valus could be the player that benefits from the new kickoff return rule. But I've been somebody who almost since that rule, while I've acknowledged why people think that and why it could very well help him out, is I still look at Valus Jones as somebody who, like, it's not the fact of can he run, can he hold on to the ball? Now, if he, if he solves that in training camp and those questions go away, absolutely. But even then, he's somebody who kind of needs that extra runway to get up to speed. Now, he's a fast player, but I don't know if I trust the quickness of Avalis Jones yet. And in the wide receiver game, you know, we have so much depth now at that wide receiver position. If they look at Tyler Scott being more ready to go and even being able to be used in the run game, which is somewhere that I do think Valus could be used at as well, it could knock him out in that wire, even further down that wide receiver pool as well. So Valus is somebody, when you hear something like they may look to use Romo Dunze to return kicks, and you brought in some special team specialists as well, both undrafted and veterans, I do think that it could be a world in which Valus could end up being cut by the Chicago Bears. Now, I do think that there is a, a, as well an opportunity that he comes in, he finds his rhythm in that special teams, he becomes a weapon there, and then we don't even look back. But I'd be remiss if I did not mention that Bayless Jones could absolutely be somebody who could be cut by the Chicago Bears. And that's just because of the, the depth at wide receiver. And if you do move on and find better, more consistent players in that special teams, I think at that point, the writing may be on the wall for Bayless Jones Jr. But again, these are, I'm not looking or wanting anybody to be cut. I hope everybody works out for the Chicago Bears, right? But I think Bayless is somebody that you that I would be remiss to not say is not a, a candidate to be cut by the Chicago Bears. And then next up I want to talk about is Dominique Robinson. And I think that this goes, goes just, I, I don't really have to speak too much on this one. Dominique Robinson was a player that initially in his rookie year, when he was coming off the bench, showed a lot of flashes. Flashes that when it came time for us to make a trade and that him to move into the starting lineup, we had some excitement of what he was going to be able to bring. And it's almost been downhill since the, for Dominique Robinson since that point. He's just been proven as somebody who hasn't really developed a lot, right? And, and you know, he could find himself on the way out. Much like I said with Larry Borm, there's a rookie here that could pass Dominique Robinson up on the depth chart in Austin Booker. And Austin Booker could be the future starter there at that defensive end opposite Montez Sweat. And if, you, if that happens, listen, Dominique Robinson has a very small leeway in that case. And... With the Bears and the, and the talk around the Bears bringing in a veteran edge as well at some point maybe this offseason before the season starts, if the Bears do look, look to bring in a veteran, um, a veteran defensive end, I think the writing's on the wall. Dominique Robinson is the one to go. Jacob Martin we just brought in. Awesome Booker you're not going to pass up. Uh, Khalid Kareem could be, but again, he's somebody as well at 26 years old still. You know, uh, enough of an unknown commodity, and the Bears did just bring him in as well last season. Maybe he that he ends up staying as well. I mean, there's an opportunity that that uh, Khalid could be, um, you know, cut before Dominique Robinson. Who, like I said, I, I, it's not that Dominique Robinson still doesn't have some promise. Twenty six years old, like six five, two hundred and fifty three pounds. He's shown an ability to be solid. But I think that if you bring in a veteran and that if the Bears walk away from this training camp period or whatever and thinking, no, we need another veteran edge. I think Dominic Robinson is on the way out because Austin Booker is there 
And I think Austin Booker is prepped, ready to go, and I think he's going to be turning some heads. But let me know what you guys think. Who are some players that you guys think could be cut, um, you know, either leading into training camp, during training camp, after training camp? Let me know what you guys think on that down below. What also position group are you most confident in? Let me know that that down below as well. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. That's thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, Chi Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.